take a ride into the 21st century. This car is powered by batteries and it's part of the International Electric Grand Prix, the largest gathering of alternative fuel vehicles ever assembled. We're off and humming. Five, four, three, two, one, go. The route of the Grand Prix will take us from Long Beach to San Bernardino. Traveling through normal street traffic, it's not a contest of speed. This is a real-world test of endurance and driving skills. In traffic, our car hardly stands out, except for the fact that its electric engine is adding zero pollution to the surrounding environment. The International Electric Grand Prix is a three-day event. Stops along the way allow the competitors to show off their cars, and, of course, charge their batteries. This is the equivalent of a traveling gas station. Dan Parmley explains. Well, what we have is the first mobile electric fueling station built in the United States. Mobile? Right. In other words, what we can do is we can bring this vehicle fueling station to shopping plazas, places of work, or at events like this, and charge up numerous cars. Uh, at this event, we're charging between 30 and 40 electric cars at one time. Now, do you charge for this service like you would for gas, like anyone would for gas? Yes, it's designed to be metered. As you see, we have meters that's similar to what you have on a house. Mm -hmm. So this tells you how many kilowatts of energy you're using, and this information then can be uh, sent to the power company to get a, a utility bill, or uh, it could go on your uh, Visa or MasterCard. While the Grand Prix contestants are charging up, the crowd here at Santa Monica College has come to glimpse the future. But not every car looks like it belongs to Luke Skywalker. Welcome to a 1930s version of the 21st century. The dream of electric-powered cars goes way back. This classic is owned and still driven by Jameson Handy Jr. Well, this was built as electric. It's a Detroit Electric, 1932. They made about 13,000 of these cars between 1906 and 1941 when they quit for World War II. And here we are in 1992, and it's back in vogue. 60 years old. <laughs> and the latest thing again. Both Jameson and his Detroit Electric have witnessed a lot of changes in transportation, but it was the oil crisis of the 1970s that foreshadowed the need for today's race for change. Oh, yeah, that's funny. My friends at work used to tease me, say, well, you know, you're supposed to save on electricity, too, remember? <laughs> you aren't allowed to use Christmas lighting. And I said, yes, but there's no line up by the light plug. There sure is at the gas station. <laughs> like the 30s, today, battery life and weight remain major obstacles. But memories of gas lines and strict new air quality standards are pushing electric technologies faster than ever. This car is at the cutting edge. It's the solar flare. Using hand-me-down hardware, it was designed and built by students at Cal Poly Pomona. Cal Poly's Tina Shelton. This isn't really designed to be a commuter vehicle and something you'll take to the grocery store. This is like the Formula One cars in racing. It's a way to prove the technology, to improve efficiencies like on batteries and motors and things like that. And the real purpose is the educational experience. It's showing college kids as well as enter elementary kids and high school kids that technology is fun. What percentage of the fleet uh, you think will be electric, say, in 10, 12 years from now? Well, by law, by the year 2003, 10% of the vehicles sold have to be electric vehicles. Technologies like solar and electric may be exotic, but they don't have to belong to the 21st century. In fact, you can buy an electric car just like this one today. Bill Muir is president of a unique car dealership in North Hollywood. Green Motor Works is the first truly car dealership for electric cars. We have a showroom, we have a lot full of cars, some previously owned, some new conversions, some purpose-built electrics, and then we have a service area with four bays where we do service on people that already have electrics, and then we convert cars from gas right there on the premises. With purchase prices ranging between eleven and thirty thousand dollars, buying an electric car isn't cheap. Add the uncertainty of new technologies and the lack of readily available recharging stations, the question remains, is all this talk of electric cars premature? Not to Don Bright, 
of Solar Electric Engineering. We have an electric car manufacturing facility in Southern California that will produce more on-road EVs than anyone has ever produced in the past. EVs meaning electric Electric power. vehicles, yes. They're a little more expensive initially, but however, at an operation cost, operating cost of three cents per mile, and the fact that there's virtually zero maintenance, there's no tune-ups, spark plugs, oil changes, mufflers, radiators, starters, all the things that can go wrong with your gas-powered vehicle are eliminated with an electric car. So your overall cost is less, and you're doing it with zero pollution, you're saving the world, and you can sleep better at night. Not all transportation experts are so optimistic. Battery technology still has a way to go to compete with the speed, range, and fueling convenience of the internal combustion engine. But electric vehicle enthusiasts are confident an inevitable transportation revolution is just around the corner and coming fast. When this international electric Grand Prix is over, there'll only be one winner. But transportation experts say we can all be winners. If we continue to develop and explore environmentally conscious alternatives to conventional gas-powered cars.